YouTube is a promiscuous lady that will suck your money and energy as a content creator. And I know what you're saying, not another rant. Well, this is my last one. I swear. Well, sort of, but we'll get to that at the end of this video. But back to the whole integrity thing. I have a whole bunch of other issues that I'm about to talk about. I'm not talking about the sub, buying of subs or buying of views. That was covered in a previous video. There'll be a link down to that below and also link to it at the end of this video. What I'm talking about is three other things that I've come across that may be going on that's damaging to you as a viewer, me as a creator itself, and even the product uh, manufacturer themselves. The first one I'd like to highlight is content you know, creators, we're trying to look for affordable things to bring you content, especially first starting off because you're not making any money on YouTube. So we look for avenues of affordable ways of doing things. But one of the things that people do that is very low integrity is actually buying B-stock items, used items, or even open box items, and not stating to that fact that they are those items, and they do a review on them, passing them off as new. So if there's any issues and they highlight that, then you know it's damaging to the product, but it's also damaging to you, the viewer itself because you're not getting an honest opinion of an off the shelf, brand new boxed item that hasn't been possibly returned or maybe someone tried to do some work on it. I have actually highlighted this in some of my videos where I thought I've gotten something from Amazon that seemed like there's no way it could have passed you know, QC from a factory or anything. So someone might have done some work onto it, didn't like it and just sent it back and got their money back but never told Amazon that there was anything wrong with it. And they're not guitar experts, so they're not gonna know that something's off. They're just gonna resend it out when somebody asks for it. And this is, you know, to me, one of the like, very low integrity things because a damaging review to especially a new and up and coming product could totally cripple it, even from a small YouTuber like myself. Next up, but first, a word from our sponsor. Oh yeah, that's right. This isn't sponsored by anybody. But if you want to send some money to me, I'll gladly put your name on it and say that it's a sponsored video, courtesy of you. We do occasionally get products from time to time from people that are generous enough to send them to us. Did you know that it's actually considered income? And did you actually know that, that is really considered a sponsored video? YouTube requires you to check a box anytime you have a sponsored video. And I'm noticing quite a few content creators, they're not out there doing that. And I don't know if you see that water mark that says this is a sponsored video, if that affects you at all, if it makes you feel like, you know, the, the video is lesser because it's a sponsored video. But it, technically, it's you're, that's what you're supposed to do. What Henning Pauly does is this really cool thing where he actually does like a watermark of the company logo at the beginning of every video that is sponsored. So that's really cool that you get that thing right there. And just saying it's a sponsored video is not good enough, technically by YouTube terms. Along with those sponsorships, sometimes the company requires you to actually have um, talking points, which I'm okay with because sometimes I may see something in the specs and it doesn't appeal to me but it may be something that somebody out there might geek out on. So if they want me to highlight something, I'm cool with that. But what I'm not cool with is them editing my videos and taking out any, or telling me to take out anything that's a negative that I may find with the product. I always do honest reviews and I tell them up front, this is what's gonna happen. And if they want to not do the video, that's fine. But I'm not gonna, say something is great and point out something bad and then have to take it out because a company tells me to do so. But you don't know that because some creators aren't even telling you things like that. I always try to mention in my videos, you, so you may hear me say, you know, from time to time, all my opinions are my own because, you know, these companies aren't requiring me to say something that I don't want to say. Some of them, will also 
require that they have access to the footage, which me personally, I'm okay with because I always have the video on my channel to point to. And most people actually, I think, see it on my channel compared to uploading to their own. But some may feel indifferent about that. And again, with all these things, if the YouTuber isn't checking that box saying this is a sponsored review, you don't know if they've been paid to say this. They may be charging a good amount of money, which we're gonna to get to in a little bit. And then with all that, you only watching one or two videos now, you may not be getting a completely honest review. Before I get into the last topic, remember when you said, oh boy, not another rant, and I said this is my last one? Well, it kind of is. Basically, what I'm going to start doing is still maybe doing these things from time to time, but I'm going to unlist them, and they're going to be available to my members either through Patreon or for YouTube, which we just really cool just started doing the memberships just uh, actually as of uh, today. So if you want to sign up for that, you'll get to see these types of videos. I like to also maybe show you some of the editing skills, not that I'm a great editor, some of the things behind the scenes of a content creator, also the just growing as a channel itself. And most of you have emailed me already and we've been you know trading tips. That's not gonna stop either. I'm not looking to charge the money for those things, but basically the way the YouTube algorithm works is that when I do videos like this and it gains traction in the shock YouTube realm of, you know, whatever genre, it kind of mishmashes which where my content should go. So when you unlist something, it doesn't screw up your analytics at all. And it just helps with keeping the channel straight on as a guitar, effects, amps, all that stuff. It'll still be available out there and really for a low, modest price. So if you want those juicy, salacious tidbits, then you would have to sign up for our membership. All right, so back to the last topic that I wanted to discuss is that I've only seen one person, I think, ever post how much they charge for a review. And that was, you know, just from strictly unboxings to full demos, like, then to complete under the hoods where they take the strings off and open up everything and do a deep dive into it. And I don't know if they actually even sh show those prices anymore. So, you know, I actually told my viewers at some point, the year end, I would always show them the cost of doing, of you know, the channel, how much it costs to do things like that. So they know, because a lot of people that actually follow me do have channels themselves. And... I could see like not necessarily people wanting to show how much that they charge for a review because at some point in YouTube stardom, you can actually almost name your price on how much you want to charge for a review. And some people actually, they get a good chunk of change and probably rightfully so. But to me, I'm thinking if a company is going to spend a decent amount of money on a review of a product, I don't think you're gonna get the same box off the shelf from Sweetwater or Guitar Center or Amazon or straight from the company themselves. I think somebody might just go through that with a fine tooth comb to make sure that everything is, you know, pretty good on it. I kind of feel like, yeah, we should know and you know, it's also nobody's business. What do you think, actually? That'd be, you know, leave a comment down below what you think about, you know, the whole, you know, review thing and should you show the prices. I don't know if I would necessarily show ever how much I got paid for a review, but I don't think I'm going to be making 10 grand anytime soon on a review. And not saying that anybody out there makes 10 grand, but... We all could dream, right? Well, I appreciate you all stopping in and listening to my last rant. This might even be my first rant because I don't think I really ranted before. Kind of just highlighted items, but 
You've all been a fantastic audience. And as always, stay tuned.